Welcome back to the Swamp 24-7 Podcast. I'm Thomas Goldcamp here with my co-host Blake Alderman. Blake, we got a lot of news to get to. I think first and foremost we should talk about the coaching staff, which is not quite officially complete as far as the on-field hires. Florida has not announced the 10th guy yet, but reports are out that Florida has snagged longtime James Franklin assistant Sean Spencer to coach the defensive line. He's a guy that was with James Franklin at uh, Vanderbilt back in, uh, I think, 2011 to 2013, and then was at Penn State for a long time. Actually has been with the New York Giants for the last two years, and that's where kind of the Florida connection comes in. He had ties to Rob Sale on that Giants coaching staff. Florida hired Rob Sale. Uh, had some things shift around, I think, Blake, a little bit on, on the coaching board as far as guys that Florida was looking at, but they end up hiring Sean Spencer, the longtime James Franklin assistant. He'll be coaching the defensive line. And then we found out officially that Jay Bateman is coming over from UNC. He will coach the inside linebackers. So two guys, again, Blake, that I think are pretty well thought of on the recruiting trail. And to me, Florida staff, uh, it looks pretty good on paper. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think that whenever you look at, you know, even a guy like Jay Bateman, you know, a guy who's been a longtime defensive coordinator, you get him as a as a position coach. You know, you have uh, Sean Spencer coming in as that other co-defensive coordinator to join uh, uh, Patrick Tony. Um, a guy on the defensive line, you look at him, you know, recruiting ties, you know, his his all-time recruiting list when he was at Penn State is pretty impressive. Um, along with, you know, all the other guys that have already been hired, you look at their, you know, their time, what they've done as far as recruiting on uh, since they've been to Florida or, you know, previously like, you know, a, a Corey Raymond or a yeah. Sean Spencer or a Jay Bateman. You've got guys that have extensive recruiting ties. So you've got not only some coaches that are, you know, known as good coaches, you know, like the Corey Raymonds, the Jay Bateman, who's been, you know, like I said, a defensive coordinator, but you've got really – really good recruiters, whether they're a guy that comes in like the Raymonds and the Batemans that are known to be good recruiters or a guy like a Patrick Tony, who has, you know, been pretty solid as a recruiter so far for Florida since he's been here. So, you know, I'm really liking the recruiting, uh, the, from a recruiting standpoint, this coaching staff, we'll see how things pan out as far as spring ball and the season goes, you know, as far as their coaching and what they'll do for the team. But, you know, with a guy like Billy Napier, who, who has a plan and knows what he's doing, um, I, I agree with you. I, you know, I think it's a pretty impressive coaching staff, you know, at least the initial coaching staff. And, and I think my big takeaway is it's a kind of a well-balanced staff, right? Like you have some guys that are absolute studs all the way around. I think uh, Billy Napier kind of pointed to Corey Raymond as a guy that he's already an expert in kind of the things he does, and he's a terrific recruiter. Then you've got some 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 guys on the staff like maybe a William Piegler who's really well thought of, kind of younger coach. Um, the offensive staff seems to be a lot younger than the defensive staff. Defensive staff probably more established names. But Blake, uh, one other thing I thought was really interesting about the makeup of this assistant coaching staff is kind of where the recruiting ties are, right? Like Jay Bateman's coming over. He's a he's a guy that has extensive Carolina ties after his time there now. Mike Peterson, obviously, a lot of ties in that South Carolina area. Um, you got Kerry Colbert's got some West Coast connections. You've got Corey Raymond in the in the Louisiana area, and certainly you know some of the other guys that have come from Billy Napier's Louisiana staff. You got ties there. Uh, but but how important is that, Blake, in recruiting to have guys? that that kind of unlock different areas of the country for you you know I think it's good you know I think that you know maybe not so much the west coast um you know sure if you can snag a guy here and there I, I don't think that that's an area that should be part of your fingerprint you know is it one where you use some ties while you have them from being out at USC and having and being from you know from the west coast if you if you can get them yes but I don't think that's an area where you need to put a lot of your eggs in the basket you know sure you look at the, the ties to Louisiana, you can expect that's going to be an area, you know, the, the Louisiana, you battle a lot of guys for LSU. They're going through a new coaching change yourself. Um, you, you have to use those ties, but you know, Napier even has, you know, coaching tie or excuse me, uh, recruiting ties to the state of Georgia, which is an area where Florida needs to put some focus at, you know, I, I would, you know, even Mike Peterson who has ties from being from Florida. Um, I'd like to see a little bit of those ties start to get built in the state of Florida. And I think that that's something that through relationships and building, that's something the 2023 class, you know, you can put those efforts into that. Um, but as far as, you know, where their ties are at, you know, sure, Louisiana produces a lot of big time players. Georgia produces a lot of big time players. You know, the state of Texas is an area where Florida has been recruiting pretty heavily as well, having some wide receivers in there that they've been recruiting. Um, so I'm interested to see how those out of state ties work in. But I'm really more interested than anything, seeing them continue to build those ties in the state of Florida. And I think that that's something Billy Napier has put some some effort into. You know, they had the high school coaching convention for you know high schools in the state of Florida. Billy Napier brought a boatload of, 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 of staffers with him there. So you're seeing him work 
diligently to build those ties to the state of Florida, whether it's a recruit, whether it's a high school head coach. And that's something that you really want to see, because when you look at the coaching staff, yes, there's some guys who have some ties to the state of Florida, but you don't see those extensive deep ties on the coaching staff on that on-field coaching staff that has ties to the state of Florida. And, but it's good to see that they are working diligently to build those and to make their faces known and to be around and out and about. I'm sure there's some guys on the off-field staff that are going to have those ties to the state of Florida. I'm talking more of just the on-field, you know, 10 assistants and the head coach coaching staff. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point because you look at this staff and you, you don't necessarily have a guy that you're like, oh, you know, that's our T-Rob down in Miami or, you know, a, a Larry Scott in Lakeland, so to speak. Um, you don't have a guy necessarily, at least off the top of my head, that that like jumps out as a, a an awesome Florida recruiter. And so I think you're right. I think they're going to have to build somewhat kind of build the infrastructure around that. And I think that's where some of these off the field hires can help. You know, they're not able to go again, on the road recruiting, yeah, but when, sure. you know, players come up on seven on seven camps, that kind of thing. Those are the guys that can maybe, you know, establish some of those tie ins as these assistants get settled. Right. And, you know, you see that Napier, you know, obviously he made that recruiting system work in the state of Louisiana. And when he arrived in Louisiana, I mean, there weren't really extensive ties to that state. And by the time he had got the foundation laid, you know, he had those you know, those, those bonds built with guys. So, I mean, it's, it's not impossible for him to do that in the state of Florida. He's obviously done it in Louisiana and built those connections there. It's doable at the state of Florida, but that's where I really want to see things improve for the 2023 class, because everyone knows the state of Florida. I mean, you produce it's top yeah. talents loaded. You're the state of, you know, you're the, you're the flagship university in the state of Florida. You have lots of things there that, you know, you can really, um, you know, sell to recruits and, you know, you're an SEC team. So, you know, those are things where you want to build those things and those ties. And Florida is one of those schools that has always not had problems getting those guys to come in for visits. So that's something that, you know, you can kind of keep in your back pocket. If you're Florida, you're going to get those guys on campus. It's just continuing to build those relationships and those bonds with those guys. Well, and the other thing is, I mean, we have seen previous Florida staff kind of put their, their focus in the wrong areas. I mean, Dan Mullen, when his staff arrived, you know, they had, I forget which the, the off-field staffer was from out that way. Was it Cordell Landers that had the, the mm-hmm. West Coast ties? But, and you Ron know, English and Ron well. English, and they spent a lot of time out in California, I think that first or second recruiting cycle, and really didn't come home with a lot to show for it. I mean, they ended up landing Chris Steele's the only real guy I can think of, and mm-hmm. obviously we saw how that turned out. So I'm with you on that. I think, you know, don't, don't necessarily prioritize the West Coast. And, you know, I, I think the general idea is pick – Pick some top-notch national recruits here and there when you can, when there's already sure. a connection. Uh, but to your point, you know, you got to focus on Florida and and kind of build things that way. Blake, uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Speaking of kind of building Florida, the the current roster is something that obviously, you know, we knew coming out of the 2021 season, there were some holes on the roster. We've talked about those and, and the sort of spots that we think Billy Napier needs to add some players Florida's done a good job in the transfer portal so far. And I think the biggest one that we were waiting on, that offensive lineman, what can you tell us about Osiris Torrance? Osiris Torrance, I mean, Florida's getting a guy on the interior part of the offensive line that has had, I believe, 38 starts in his career, you know, starting games as a freshman for ULL. Um, has those ties to Napier and a lot of the coaches, Darnell Stapleton, Rob Sale was the guy who recruited him and coached him uh, earlier on in his time at ULL before making that move to the New York Giants. So, you know, Florida – on that, in a perfect world to me, I think you have a guy you can plug in on that right side of the offensive line at the offensive guard position. We've talked extensively about how in the past that right side of the offensive line has been a weakness for Florida up front. You've got a guy now that you can plug in that, you know, was getting, you know, high NFL draft buzz, you know, heading into, you know, if, if he wanted to go into the NFL draft this year, he decided to come back, continue to build that draft stock. Um, and I think it was a smart move for him to go somewhere. If, if you're wanting a one-year rental type of guy that is looking to improve that draft stock, go with a system you know and go with coaches that you know that have already put you at that point to where you're successful. So I think that that made a lot of sense for him up at Florida. Um, he'll be a guy that's there in the spring. You know, he's already getting his class schedule ironed out. Um, he'll be back in town at some point this week to get in there for the spring semester. So he'll be able to participate in spring football. But this gives you a guy that you can plug in at right guard. You can slide a guy like, uh, you know, Josh Braun out to right tackle. Obviously, there are things you can tinker with during spring football. That's the whole point of spring football, you know, especially for a first-year head coach is to tinker with things and see what works best. Um, But, you know, Florida's got a guy that, you know, 
adding through the transfer portal, you've added a guy that, you know, is, is easily, if not your best, one of your best offensive linemen now. And you've done that through the transfer portal. So uh, I can't say enough good things about what, you know, what a guy like uh, Osiris Torrance brings to Florida and, and what he can do for their offensive line going forward. Yeah, I saw, I think just before we hopped on the pod, I saw a link uh, from ESPN where they were putting together their sort of way too early preseason All-American teams and Osiris Torrance was on it. So obviously a big addition that way. And, and Blake, this is a guy that, Florida actually had some competition for it's not like you know it's not like it was a slam dunk right Uh, so another another good sign for for Billy Napier and his staff another Louisiana guy that they've added from the transfer portal is running back Montrell Johnson he was a guy that was very productive over 800 yards as a freshman I know that you know Louisiana kind of rotates their backs very heavily similar to what we've seen Florida do the last couple years but Blake he's an impressive guy to me no doubt you add the Sun Belt freshman of the year um, a guy, like you said, that was very productive as a freshman for ULL. Um, you get a guy that, you know, at the running back position that isn't one of those one-year rental type of guys. You've, you've got someone that you're going to be able to develop within your program. You know, his best years are going to be ahead of him as he continues to get better and, and get acclimated to, you know, Florida and the SEC and, and just continue to elevate his game every year that he's able to get those practices in and those game reps in. Um, a hard-nosed type of runner, you know, you don't see a guy that – I don't want to say he's slow, but you don't see a guy that's just a burner, you know, just a home run type of threat guy. But you've got a very powerful type of back, a guy that can make those cuts and can make you miss. But I think it's exciting to think of the thought of pairing a guy like that as a powerful runner with someone like a Demarcus Bowman. You know, you didn't need to add that home run threat type of runner in a Montreal Johnson type because you've got that guy in a Demarcus Bowman. Yeah, he hasn't had the snaps. You know, I'm talking about Bowman at, at the college level. Um, he, he didn't get those snaps really at Clemson. was really kind of limited from, you know, the seniority type of guys with, uh, with Florida this past season in 2021. But just what you've seen, I mean, you look at the high school tape for Bowman. I mean, he is he's lightning in a bottle. And now you've got a little bit of thunder to mix with that lightning in Montreal Johnson. So I really like the idea of pairing a guy like Bowman with a guy like uh, Montreal Johnson. You're, you're making me think of uh, Lendale White and Reggie Bush over here. I'm not, not to hype Florida fans too much, but uh, yeah, I hear thunder and lightning, and that's what my mind immediately goes to. Uh, Blake, there was a third transfer that Florida took in the last week or so that maybe was a little bit unexpected. Jalen Kimber out of, out of Georgia, a cornerback that was in the mix to potentially start for Georgia before he had a, a shoulder injury, I believe, that, that mm-hmm. ended his season. Uh, what what was your knowledge of him as a recruit coming out of high school? I mean, how how high profile a guy is this? You've got a guy that's a, you know was a, a top ten cornerback in his high school recruiting class. You know, a long and lanky, rangy type of defender. Um, he he had visited Florida, I believe it was for a spring football game uh, back when he was you know heading into his senior year. Um, you know, Florida was was somewhat involved there, but obviously he ended up at Georgia, um, enrolled early there. You know, had played his his freshman year and his and his redshirt freshman year had that shoulder injury, like you said. So he missed the majority of that 2021 season, um, was a guy that was expected to come in and if not get a starting role for Georgia in 2022, a guy that was expected to make, you know, a lot of snaps for the Bulldogs. So, um, you know, adding one of those guys, you know, a a Corey Raymond type of defensive back, one of those long and lanky guys that can run, um, you know, so I think he fits really well into what what Corey Raymond wants to do. And and like you said, this was a little bit of a surprise. He actually was on campus, um, you know, should be getting everything squared away to enroll. I know Florida hasn't announced him yet, um, but that's one that, you know, you should again see um, like a Torrance, you know, in there for spring football. Uh, you know, he entered the portal. I want to say it was it was January 13th or yeah. one day this past week. Yep. And it only took maybe two or three days, four days tops for Corey Raymond to really get in there, shut this thing down and get him to commit to Florida. So, um, you know, a surprise addition for Florida hats off to Corey Raymond doing his thing and what he's done. Um, he has the pedigree there. And I think Corey Raymond was one of the biggest reasons why that Jalen Kimber wanted to come to Florida, a school that he was interested in whenever he was a high school recruit. But now he has a chance to work with a guy like Corey Raymond, who's known for producing guys that fits his skill set fits his his body type um, and a guy that has a lot of NFL draft picks under his belt. Um, so, you know, he's families with, uh, you know, family members, I believe his cousin is chief boarders. Um, so he's got some family ties there to, to the Florida roster. So, um, you know, I, I guess the entire chief boarders family, man, the dad is always down there bringing some kids. He handles a lot of, uh, you know, high school recruits around the country. Um, so, you know, the dad's bringing in recruits in to visit Florida chiefs on the roster. Now you got Jalen on the roster. They might as well just, you know, start moving in the entire family. I guess Chief's little brother, we can already pencil him to come to Florida too. So we'll see how that plays out. There you go. And then, and then Princely's brother's getting interest now too. So yep. we, we got a whole family affair here. It takes a village. Um, well, that's. Uh, I think that's good for the first half of the show, Blake. Uh, I guess one other note, Kamori Gamble announced he's transferring to UCF. Um, you know, one of those guys that was a potential super senior returnee, uh, not going to be returning. He's going to seek an opportunity to play at UCF. 
Uh, but Blake, let's leave it there. Uh, Florida just got through hosting a massive recruiting weekend and coaches are now on the road visiting prospects. So I want to catch up with you on some of that right after this break. Welcome back to the Swamp 24-7 podcast. I'm Thomas Camp here with Blake Alderman. Blake, Florida just got done hosting a major official visit weekend. I know a lot of top prospects were on campus. I think none of them were rated higher than five-star linebacker. Uh, now I'm Go blanking Perkins. for Perkins. Uh, so what can you tell us about how his visit went and where Florida stands at this point with him? You know, he headed into that visit, you know, committed to A&M, has not been shy about the fact that he was going to take visits going forward. Um, he's at the Polynesian Bowl this week. He'll be, you know, conducting practices out in Hawaii. Um, he'll be able to play in that game on Saturday. I'm hoping that, you know, I, I could have been his guardian to go out there to Hawaii for a free trip out there. That obviously didn't happen. I'm still here. Um, but, you know, I think Florida – the way he put it was that Florida landed their best shot. You know, they took their best shot and they landed it. You know, I think that he was a guy that was recruited by the former coaching staff. There wasn't really any traction there. I think he's really been interested in what the new coaching staff has had to say. He's a guy that you've already had interest in Florida. Maybe just didn't click really well with the former coaching staff. That sort of changed. You know, I think Florida has had a bit of an uphill battle, um, you know, c- overcoming A&M because he has been a lean to A&M for most of his recruitment. You know, back in the summer, back in the spring, people were thinking that A&M was where he's going to end up. Um, that wasn't the case as far as him signing with the Aggies in the December signing period getting him on Florida's campus. I think that Florida made a really big impression on him, um, telling him that he can be an X factor type of guy in their defense. That's what he wants to hear. He wants to get those early snaps. Obviously he's one that can do that at Florida. My thing that I want to see going forward is does the luster, you know, the hype of this Florida visit wear off as he continues to go towards signing day, because he's talking about visiting LSU in some capacity. I don't know how he's going to be able to fit that in. Miami's another visit he's talked about. I, I think the 28th, that last weekend before signing day is when he's looking to do that. I don't know that that official visit data has been completely locked in yet. Um, so you're, you're, you're trying to see where he goes at with visits. Does he show back up for A&M uh, for another unofficial visit before signing day? There are still a lot of things going on. I will say Florida made a big impression on him. You know, again, all the things that they pitched to him, all the all the connections he made with the coaching staff. Uh, he's really close with Kamari Wilson, Florida's freshman early enrollee. Um, so he's got him in his ear. I just want to see does the hype wear off going forward. You know, Florida made sure to continue to try to keep that hype going on Monday. They stopped uh, uh, Jamar Chaney, uh, Patrick Tony, Corey Raymond went out to to New Orleans to visit with uh, with uh, Harold's uncle, who is very involved in his recruitment. You know, he's from uh, Louisiana. That's where Perkins is from before he moved over to Texas. Perkins is. Like I said, he's in Hawaii. He's at the Polynesian Bowl. You can't go out and visit those guys whenever you're a coach. You can't go out and visit those guys while they're taking part in that game, just as far as rules go. But Florida made it a point to go see a family member who's kind of a shot caller in this recruitment. So they're trying to continue to keep that buzz going, that momentum going. You know, obviously, whenever he gets back from that Polynesian Bowl, Billy Napier still has his in-home visit there to talk to him. So Florida's really going to continue to keep kicking the tires on him. Again, I just want to see if that that hype of that Florida visit does wear off. I think that's really interesting that they've, you know, made it a point to sort of find the key player in their recruitment. I've always thought that's one of the biggest things in recruiting that separates elite recruiters from from just good or above average recruiters is not only are they good at the sales pitch part of it, but they know who they need to pitch what. And I think that's a very key part of that recruitment. Blake, who are some of the other top prospects on campus uh, who you can tell us a little bit about their visit this weekend? Yeah, you know, you start off with the three-star safety, Miguel Mitchell, who committed to Florida that Sunday coming out of his visit, um, was recruited by a lot of the coaches that were at, at ULL with uh, Billy Napier. Um, Patrick Tony being the go-to guy there for him um, was was a guy that he had a really good relationship with, you know, comes out to Florida, spends time with Tony again, uh, talks with things, sees Florida, sees their plan for the future. Um, he's a guy that, you know, while he's rated a three-star, they really like his talent. And not only the just what he's shown at safety, but he's a guy that has played nickel. He's played corner on his film. So he, that versatility is something that really stood out to them. Um, he's a guy that, you know, isn't afraid to hit. He's very physical. You know, he has good breaking speed. So there's a lot of things that Tony and Florida really liked about him. Um, he committed to Florida that Sunday coming out of that visit. Um, you know, three-star wide receiver Caleb Douglas, you know, had had Florida leading heading into that official visit. That's still the case coming out of that visit. He's talking about visiting Oregon. Um, we'll see where that visit, if anything, changes there going forward. But, you know, Florida likes his size and, you know, really likes what he can do on the field. They don't have any wide receiver commits right now. So that's a guy that they have, have been looking at. Uh, three-star interior offensive lineman Jalen Farmer 
um, visited Florida. He's committed to Florida, had been committed to Dan Mullen, uh, remains in the class. But he's as far as the coaching change that took place, it kind of opened the door somewhat for him to want to take visits. He was able to visit Kentucky in December before the early signing period um, at Florida this past weekend. He will be at Auburn this coming weekend and should be at Mississippi State uh, that final weekend of January 28th before signing day. Um, you know, I'm not really sure where his head is at right now. I think that, you know, we've got a guy who's going to continue to take visits. So I think it's still a little bit up in the air as far as him seeing what else is out there, weighing his options, seeing if Florida's the best place for him. Is, is um, he a I guy can... Florida would like to keep in the class? Yes, definitely. Okay. You know, you see where Billy Napier was out to see him in December. Um, they really want to keep him in the class. They like what he brings as far as physicality. Um, you look at him on his film. I mean, this is a guy that if you're watching offensive line film, you know, I'm not going to sit there and pretend I'm this, you know, big professor wizard of watching offensive line film and knowing what to, what to see and what to look at. But I know that if you have a tape full of a guy that is taking dudes to the ground and like pushing them into like the earth's crust every play, that's a dude. And that's a guy that they really like. Um, I think he's more limited as far as an interior offensive lineman. Um, Darnell Stapleton will be in on Thursday by the school to see him. Um, a guy, again, that Florida really wants to hang on to. And I can tell you one thing from talking to his coach earlier this morning. Um, he really liked his time around the coaching staff. You know, the thing that really stood out to Jalen on his visit was the fact that it wasn't just the offensive line coaches that talked to him. I mean, the entire staff talked to him. They were excited to talk to him. They knew his name. They already knew him. So they were excited to see him. And the, the, way that Billy Napier is, you know, improving things for the players as far as, you know, changing the housing around for them, um, having parking things, you know, to where they don't have to deal with having all these tickets and the, you know, the food and all these other things, the facilities coming in, all of those things of where he's seeing them take care of his players, I think was one of the biggest takeaways for Jalen on that visit. You know, some other guys that visited in there, four-star athlete, Arliss Boardingham um, from out in California, um, looking at him as, as kind of a hybrid tight end type of guy, maybe a, a little bit of a Kyle pitts S type of guy um, to where he's not just your true tight end, hand in the dirt, you know, an extended blocker that's going to catch a couple of passes. He's a guy you can move out in the slot. You can move him to different places. Florida and Oregon are those two main schools in it for him. Has already visited Florida this past weekend. He'll be at Oregon this weekend. A decision could come somewhat after that. I don't know that he really has a slam dunk solid timeline for making that decision. Um, but he'll probably go from where, where he'll probably go for things after he sees what, what, what Oregon is talking about. Um, having in a couple other guys, committed guys, uh, you know, Trevor Etienne, Florida's running back commit, rock solid in his commitment. Your four star uh, defensive lineman, Jamari Lyons, has already signed with Florida. Um, rock solid in his commitment as well. Obviously, he signed, um, but he was able to take that second official visit to Florida. And then the, another visitor they had in was a four star uh, linebacker, edge type of guy, uh, Marion Winston. He spent a lot of time around Mike Peterson, Florida's new outside linebackers coach. Again, he's another guy from West Coast, kind of like Boardingham um, from Oregon, has a brother that plays for the Ducks currently, um, was, was just visited in home by Oregon's coaching staff. Um, he'll be at Washington this coming weekend, and he'll be at Oregon that final weekend before, uh, before National Signing Day. He seems like a Pac-12 guy to me. I think he stays out West, whether it's Oregon or Washington. But if I had to bet right now, it seems like Oregon having those family ties to him, being a guy who was formerly committed to Oregon, I think that that's probably where I'm leaning at with him right now. Yeah, I mean, I know that he told you this weekend that uh, distance wasn't really a factor, but I mean, he did mention, you know, that he he was a little surprised by Florida in some ways because he hadn't really seen an SEC school yet. You know, he's kind of right. a guy that's been Pac-12 all the way. Uh, Blake, does do you feel like Florida has a shot, though? I, I mean, obviously, you're saying Winston, you think, stays, you know, on the West Coast. They have a shot with, with Arliss Boardingham. Is, is Florida spinning so. its wheels there? I think so. I think you've got a guy that whenever you talk to him about, you know, whenever you have a guy that, you know, you're, you're covering Florida and you're talking to a guy from out in California, the question I always ask is, does distance matter? Is that something that's a factor to you? Because Florida is a long ways away. And I don't think that's something that really matters to him, so to say. He kind of talked it and compared Florida to being California 2.0. You know, he said that one of the biggest differences is, you know, just the fact that it's, you know, it rains over there in Florida. He was like, <laughs> man, it, it rains for you guys over there. It's just really hot and, you know, out in California. Um, but I think the appeal of an SEC type of school, um, I think that's something that that is, um, you know, big to him. You know, I think Kerry Colbert is a guy that, you know, he's, he's really interested in. Uh, William Piegler, Florida's tight ends coach, will be out to see him on Thursday. Um, from, you know, talking to the family out there, you know, they really like the Florida visit. I'm interested to see how the Oregon visit does shake things out. You know, you know, again, you've got a guy that, you know, yes, they say distance isn't a factor. 
But if you've got a guy that, you know, you go visit a school like Oregon or something like that, that, you know, you start thinking closer to signing day, you know, man, I can play here. I can be closer to my mom. Those thoughts tend to, tr- to sink in at some point, the closer you get to signing day, it's not necessarily the, you know, the, the do all be all factor for them. But yes, I do. To answer your question, I do think Florida is a factor for Arliss Boardingham. I think the fact that they're an SEC school, um, he can be a type of Kyle Pitts type of guy. He knows that this coaching staff didn't coach Kyle Pitts, but he knows that a guy like Kyle Pitts came in at Florida that type of program and fits his body style and his playing style and had success in there. Um, You know, Napier has pitched the fact that he really likes to feed the tight ends. He makes it a focal part part of his offense. Um, So I do think Florida is, is a factor in there again. I just want to see where does the Oregon visit shake anything up? Does it, does it, you know, make him lean towards wanting to stay closer back to home? So we'll see how things go after that weekend visit. Like I know that last weekend was kind of the, the big shebang for Florida as far as the officials go. But what should Florida fans be looking for on the recruiting trail, either with coaches visiting in the next couple of days or, uh, you know, future visits lined up in these next really two weeks or so? You know, they've already been getting after it, you know, since Monday, they've already been out, you know, visiting a lot of uh, a lot of recruits. Um, like I said, even some family members like a Harold Perkins uncle out in Louisiana. Um, I've really been, you know, trying my best to map out a lot of those visits on Swamp 24 seven, you know, mapping them out from Monday to today so far. Um, you know, they, they've they've made it a point to see a lot of these guys, um, you know, really doing their best to. Get in there in the living room, you know, sink in things with mom and dad, talk about their plan, you know, and just continue to show face around these guys. So um, this weekend, they're they're expected to have in five official visitors by my count. Um, I actually just reminded me, you know, this past weekend, Florida had another official visitor and that wasn't a high school guy, Javon Baker, Javon Baker, Alabama wide receiver, uh, former Alabama wide receiver, um, was on an official visit this past weekend. Um, He's also visited Ole Miss. So that's a guy that Florida has really made a good impression on. You know, I think they're in a good spot. We'll see where things go as far as other visits. Um, Florida was what was, was to my to my count that first official visit to him for him. So we'll see if, you know, Ole Miss shakes anything off or anything to that nature. Um, but Florida's going to have in a, a five official visitors in this weekend. Um, the biggest guy in there is going to be four star top 50 type of guy in, in Jacoby Matthews, one of Florida's top targets overall, you know, big time rangy safety. Um, So we'll see. That's going to be his first visit. You know, he's got ties to a lot of the coaches um, like uh, Corey Raymond, who recruited him at LSU. And with Matthews being a former LSU commit, um, he's really been hearing a lot from, you know, Napier and a lot of the other coaches on staff. So um, I think another interesting visitor coming in this weekend is Max Brown. He's a three star quarterback who is committed to Central Michigan, uh, committed to Jim McElwain out there with the Chippewas, um, has thrown like I don't remember his stats off the top of my head, but he had a really strong senior year. And he's a guy that Florida has been evaluating um, since their arrival. And they visited him on Monday. They haven't offered him yet, but he'll be out there for an official visit this weekend. So um, I'll, I, I have a lot of the official visitors on Swamp 24-7. You know, you can go check those guys out, but those are two of the more interesting guys to me heading in. Yeah. Billy Napier, obviously, uh, you know, picked Jim McElwain's brain for thoughts on the Florida job. Now he's looking to steal his QB. So there you go. All right, Blake, anything else we need to get to before we sign off today? Yeah, you know, I actually just thinking of it, Jason Jenkins, he's a three-star uh, defensive lineman um, out of the New Jersey area. Um, he's, he's expecting a visit today from a couple coaches, Billy Napier, Patrick Toney, um, Darnell Stapleton, and, and uh, Sean Spencer. You know, he's a guy that's the first defensive lineman or first recruit that I can recall of him visiting so far this week. So I know he hasn't been announced yet. Um, you know, but Sean Spencer's already on there. It's seemingly, you know, if, if we'll see when, whenever they actually show up there. But Jason is expecting Sean Spencer in there to visit with him today. So, you know, while he hasn't been announced by Florida, he's still on the recruiting trail for Florida and seeing a lot of these guys. Well, there you go, guys. Blake will have all the recruiting updates on Swamp 24-7. As always, guy crushes it, knocks it out of the park. So be sure to check us out on the website at swamp247.com. That'll do it for today's episode of the podcast, guys. We appreciate you listening. 